With the 2XD products, the one thing you do not want to do is create a consistent pattern. Whether that's full panel, half panel, or full three quarter, half quarter, and stair stepping it like shingles, you want to make the offsets as random as possible. Okay, the more staggered that your seams are as you're moving up the roof, the better overall it's going to look. If you start lining up seams like this on the roof, you're going to see it when you get back down. It's going to be awful. Maybe not awful, but when you're paying top dollar for a system like this, you want it to look slick. And you don't want any of that visual distraction. So the more random that you can make it, the better. Now, this is a small demo deck, so we probably won't be able to do it here. But in most situations, you're going to be looking at bigger facets of roofs. Okay. One other thing before we get into that. Because this system installs from the bottom up, both XD systems install from the bottom up. They also install from the left to the right. Okay, so if we had a big stretch of roof to do, what I normally do is I'll just take three or four panels, randomly shuffle them and, and offset them this way with each other, and run one saw cut. Don't even get out a tape measure. Just run a saw cut right through them all. Boom, you've instantly got three or four starter pieces to work with. So you'll usually start with a full course, full panel, shuffle in one of your cuts, shuffle in one of your cuts. Maybe on the fourth course, you go back to another full and shuffle them in. And then if you can, if it's possible, run those courses out, finish off that run, whatever you have for a scrap when you finish off that last panel, just simply take it back and boom, you got an instant starter to keep working with. Okay? So with these systems, the good thing about it is Unless you've got a lot of hip and not a lot of valley, or a lot of valley and not a lot of hip, most of your waste with this system is going to come up at your ridge line. Let's say you've got 120 feet of ridge line to do, and you've got two sides of that ridge line to do, and you get up here and your last full course is two inches short of your ridge. Well, unfortunately, you just bought maybe five or six squares worth of panels to make that, which could be 1500 bucks or so. So your layout's kind of important. You're really not gonna be able to change whatever it is it is. Um, I have seen contractors that'll get into that situation. And because our cap might not be wide enough to cover it, we're working with a seven inch cap. So you've got basically three and a half inches that comes down on each side to cover. I've seen guys that'll take cap and they'll either get some painted flat sheet and break their own. So they'll make it more of like a standard 12 inch style cap that's one way of kind of saving your hide when you run into that scenario not going to matter as long as you're getting good enough coverage with your cap right and it's going to save you a ton of money instead of having to just cut off this much panel to finish it okay so it's just another option for you to keep in mind as you're working through this roof i've been doing this a long time since day one i've been arguing for a wider, larger cap. Um, not only for coverage purpose, but when you get into a steeper slope, these peak out higher, and by the time you cut your plywood back, you know, we're gonna have to form fit this cap to fit the pitch of our roof. When you start getting into a 12-12, now look at how narrow we are. We've got our ridge beam in there. We've got our decking cut out. Uh-oh, where am I gonna screw this? Okay, so one way if you do run into that scenario is either going and just fabricating and making your own cap, um, or you can run a two by two down the center over your ridge beam, or if it's trusses, you can toenail it to the tips of your trusses. And at least that way, our panels and everything may be floating underneath here, but we've got, a, we've got that beef of the two by, which will act like a stringer, so you know you're always gonna catch something solid down the center and actually be able to attach the cap. So there's some drawbacks and some things in the field that you may run into that you're gonna have to deal with. There's a million different ways you can do things. We've got instructions. At the end of the day, you're kind of free to use good roofing practice and put the roof together and make it work.